Before internet money would produce hit tracks like Little Tekka's Ransom, Juice World's Lucid Dreams, and Drake's Blue Tint. Before internet money would drop their debut album as a collective titled Before the Storm, which features the likes of Lil Mosey, Future, and Wiz Khalifa. None of these songs had anybody on them. Like I would get a song from Tekka, then I'm like, you know, you gotta play with the egos of the artist. Not saying any artist has an ego, but you know, they may not artists wanna, have egos. Artists have <laughs> they got egos. egos. They may not want to be on a certain <laughs> song with a certain artist. Or, so the fact that we got as many songs done with what we got done with this, and everybody's on it and everybody's cool and like the album, like every song is good. You know what I mean? There's a pretty decent chance that you might not know the name Taz Taylor, but I can almost guarantee that you know his beats. Taz is the mastermind behind the production collective known as Internet Money, a group that he created after feeling dissatisfied with the usual role of a producer in the music industry. And this is why the internet producers will always be ahead of industry producers, because industry producers sometimes got managers who handle all their You may go broke every day, bro. Every day you gotta get up and make sure you earn something, because if you don't, you ain't, you ain't eating, you know what I mean? You are essentially your artist, your manager, your label, everything when you're on the internet. As a producer, doing everything yourself. So rather than just take it lying down, Taz brought together a whole bunch of producers on the internet and created a space where they could share their knowledge with like-minded individuals and a space for equal opportunity. Over time, internet money has become its own mini empire and the team is just hitting their collective stride with the recent release of their debut album, Before the Storm. Pretty impressive for a young man from Jacksonville who took to producing beats as a means to escape homelessness while providing for his mother's cancer treatment at the same time. Speaking with DJ Booth, Taz said, some of these people, man, they don't get how how the game is different now. The internet changed everything. That might just be an understatement. It's true. What's poppin' guys, it's your boy Marlon Palmer, back at it again with a brand new video. This one detailing the come up of internet money prior to fame here for you on Before They're Famous. Seeing as how internet money is a pretty large collective formed out of over a dozen members. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna be focusing on the man that spearheaded the initiative, Taz Taylor. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and drop me the name of some of your favorite internet money produced songs while you're at it. Follow me on Instagram at that dude McFly. Now let's start the video. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Taz Taylor was born Danny Snodgrass Jr. on October 20th, 1992 in Jacksonville, Florida. Taz's father was a drummer for a local band and he'd bring his son to practice all the time. When his dad and buddies were on their smoke break, Taz would pick up drumsticks or a guitar and play around from a super young age. We're talking three or four years old here. Yeah, my, my dad was a drummer in uh, a bunch of local bands growing up. And uh, my family, like I didn't really have, like either side of my family, they didn't really f*** with me. So I basically would just go to band practice with my dad. And that's where like, I got in touch with music at. Mom even had dreams of Taz becoming the next dime bag Daryl of Panthera fame. But alas, it was not meant to be. By the time Taz was about 12 years old, he lost interest in playing instruments altogether. That was around the same time that he dropped out of school in only the seventh grade. I was in like a bunch of shit. Like I dropped out in the seventh grade. I was around like a bunch of weird people. And, shit. and it just made me feel like music was more so something that my parents and my, like my mom wanted me to do. By his own admission, Taz didn't do much for the next few years of his life. Then when Taz was around 17, his mother was diagnosed with cancer and he had to start looking for a job that would help support his family through this trying time. At first he dabbled in graphic design, but it wasn't providing enough. So next, Taz turned to his old love, music. More specifically, producing beats. This was around 2010 when Taz really started to take his beats seriously and started messing around with FL Studio, an all-in-one music production software program. Taz's musical background made it easy for him to pick up the program and before he knew it, he was crafting beats to sell online to generate cash flow. While Taz doesn't remember the name of the first beat he ever sold, he does remember how much he sold it for, $250 the equivalent to a month's pay that Taz was seeing in his work as a graphic designer. He cobbled the track together in a bedroom of his mother's Jacksonville apartment, and when he got that first check, he knew he had found his path. Soon after, he pawned all of his belongings and outfitted his room with monitors, mixers, and all the essentials of a basic studio. So I went and I pawned all my guitars that they bought me over the years, you know, like birthdays or whatever, like I get me a, like a $300 guitar or something like that. I pawned like four, uh, no, I sold like four guitars on Craigslist, and I took that 150 I got. 
and I turned it into, I went and bought like some KRKs, and that's when I really started making beats. He'd spend all night online consuming instructional video after instructional video and discussing production and forums to develop his skills and turn out tracks as often as possible. Pretty quickly, Taz got good at marketing his beats to aspiring rappers online. He'd hit up rappers on Twitter offering beats and sell one for anywhere between $20 to $200 a pop. Within six months, this middle school dropout had earned himself about $12,000. He told Vice, I got tired of people telling me I wouldn't be sh so me making money off something I wanted to do, I'm going to go hard with this. It's the only option I got. Taz would sell his creations via a one-time payment option for usage of his material, which does away with the more complicated publishing and songwriting deals normally preferred by industry producers. By 2016, he was getting noticed by Trey Songs, which led to his first major producing credit, or at least what should have been. The Trey Songs track was supposed to appear on his Trigger album, but it ended up getting switched out at the last minute. It was Taz's first real wake-up call in the industry, and it alerted him to be smart enough to always keep his side hustles of selling beats online going. Designer found one of his beats on YouTube next, and when that track dropped, it opened all kinds of doors for Taz. It even led to a publishing deal with Atlantic Records in 2017, which allowed him to lease music in both the more traditional traditional way while still independently selling his beats as well. The best part about that, his mom was there to see him sign his name on the dotted line. How's your mom doing now? Oh no, she's good man, everything's good. Great. Yeah, beautiful. In order to continue selling his beats on the web, Taz set up his collective, Internet Money, in 2015. In terms of how Internet Money operates, it's more or less like a union. The artists signed to Internet Money work for Taz, but they don't have to worry about things like splits to management under this collective. They receive far more of the money than they do in the more traditional models. The operation offers production boot camps and houses its operation in a huge co-living mansion, as well it's basically a safe haven for producers of all sorts. Right when, right when we got to LA, we were both like living in the house, just like all in one spot. But then like over time, like we all kind of like slowly grow up and like move out of the nest and get our own spots. And, and then there's like another group, like a wave of like producers and artists coming through. So you got to give them space to, you know what I'm saying, be in the house. And when you get your wings, you just go off. With a rotating door of talent like Nick Mirror, Sidepiece, E True, and Feral Vice, the credits for the collective quickly began to pile up, and by 2018, Internet Money was a label in its own right. Free Greedo, a collab with Mozzie and a still imprisoned O3 Greedo, became the first album to bear the Internet Money name. I came out to LA for the first time to do sessions with everybody else at Internet Money, and I ended up coming in to like an O3 Greedo session, which was crazy. Uh, we had talked about it a little bit before the trip and stuff like that, but then actually just coming out here and really going in the studio was dope. So me, Plattis, formerly known as Jay Platt and Taz, we produced a song for O3 Grito and Mozzie. It's called Free Grito. That year, the then 15 strong roster earned two Grammy nominations, 24 platinum plaques, 16 gold records, and five Billboard number ones. But by 2019, there was a falling out between Taz and Alamo. He agreed to buy out and then sign a new deal with 10,000 Projects and Caroline Records, which would give him even more control over who he brought into internet money. Having now gone from a Jacksonville teen to the head of a hit-making collective, Taz Taylor and internet money have very little left to prove. At this point in his career, Taz is getting more and more comfortable with the mentoring side of things. He told Pile Rats, I'm just trying to help pave the way like Khaled did or Dr. Dre did, like all these other producers. I want to do it in Jacksonville, places for kids to go and learn music or just kick it. Because where I was from, there's nothing. As someone who started off from nothing, Taz has turned his life into a definite something. And the recent release of Internet Money's first collective album, Before the Storm, is still only the beginning for this trailblazing artist and a stable of uber talented producers and rappers. As for the rest of their story, well, I think we'll end this video here. After all, this is before they were famous. What did you guys think? Drop me the name of your favorite producer in the Internet Money Collective in the comments below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, that do McFly to stay in touch. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Now we drop a new video each and every day, so here's a recent drop that you might enjoy. We handpicked that one for you because if you like this video, you'll probably like that. We also got playlists like over here, so click on that if you want to see a whole list of a bunch of videos we've dropped in the past. And if you're new to the Fame Gang, be sure to subscribe and turn on them post notifications. And I'll see you guys in another video. Boom!